Beyond the Bell, Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. And right now, we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romaine Basta, Caroline High, Taylor Riggs, counting you down to the closing bell, here to help take us beyond the bell. It's our global simulcast, Carol Masser and Tim Stenevec making an appearance, bringing together our Bloomberg <laughs> Television, Radio, I'm here. and YouTube Thanks. audiences. Thank you, Tim, for being here. Unfortunately, just as we come to you, Tim and Carol, the S&P 500 turns negative. What's going on? I know. We're not getting another record. I mean, I don't know. I think we're all waiting for that monthly jobs report. We got some indications from the ADP report of some weakness within the labor market. And I guess, Tim, now we're wondering, all right, Will the market uh, read on Friday? Will it confirm the Labor Department read? Will it confirm what we got today? Yeah, look, there's a lot of controversy around actually reading too much into ADP figures and the way they differ due to, to from the government figures that we get. Uh, you know, on the first Friday of every new month, and but certainly investors are looking toward that number. But today's miss was was pretty big. Estimates were for 625,000, and that read from ADP gave us 374,000. Uh, so traders getting defensive. Getting defensive, actually volume has been higher on the day versus the last 20 days. Of course, the last 20 days have been the depths of the summer, but we're still up 10% in terms of your average volume on the S&P 500 and same for the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. People are putting some action to work, whether or not that means because they're all slipping off for the weekend already. And you think about what this means for the bond markets. What is that telling you? I know you guys, Romaine was joking a little bit earlier when I said that the 10 year was back below a 130. This really <laughs> does highlight, though, some of the range bound behavior that we have seen, and yet some of the big calls from JP Morgan saying that don't get too complacent. You could see this going back up to a 190, though I hate to say it, we have heard that a lot before, Romaine. All right, so a pretty wild day uh, here in the markets. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average has actually been in the red for a good portion of the day here. It looks like it's going to finish in the red, down about 50 points or so as we wait for these numbers to settle. But no matter how they settle, the Dow is going to definitely be in the red, down mm -hmm. about a tenth of a percent. We're going to wait for the S&P 500 to settle here because right now it is up 0.03 percent, 1.5 percent, 1.5 points, I should say, uh, spot points here. So it'll be interesting to see if that holds. We should point out that the rally that we saw earlier in the day wasn't necessarily a strong rally. The S&P was up about three tenths of a percent at its highest level on the day. But uh, giving that back. No matter if it does close in the green, it's not going to be good enough uh, for a record high. The Nasdaq, though, uh, that did manage to hold on to some of its gains here uh, on the day here. It'll be interesting to see uh, how that closes. 50 points higher here, three-tenths of a percent. And just double-checking here, yeah, that's going to be a record high if it holds that level. The Russell 2000, that's your outperformer of the day, Carol, up about six-tenths of a percent. I'm going to sound like a little bit of a broken record because I keep focusing on what's going on in China and the Chinese stocks. They're up for a third day in a row, another 3% gain in the Nasdaq Golden Dragon China Index. So it seems like investors taking a little bit of a breather, Taylor, when it comes to some of the concerns and the oversight that we continue to see from Chinese regulators. And not a broken record, Carol, because you got huge PMI numbers out of China in particular this week that I know that we'll talk about later. But some of the nervousness from those numbers, you're maybe at least starting to see that within the equity market here in the U.S. For the radio audience, we take a look at the winners and the sector losers. I'll start with the winners, and it feels defensive, you guys. It's real estate, it's utility, it's household products. It's food and beverage. It's sort of those staples that are up anywhere from one half to one and a half percent. We go down to the losers and Carol, this really tells it all. It's banks and it's energies and it's semiconductors that are off almost 1.4 percent. That is that continued rotation out of that reflationary trade that we've talked about. All right. I do want to talk about some of the gainers in today's session. Now, Amazon was up a lot more earlier in the session. It was up about 1.6 percent, but this was a story uh, largely in the markets of those big mega cap tech names. But Amazon was an interesting one today because they are talking about doing a lot of hiring. We had a great story by Spencer Soper about that they're worried about drivers and they're telling their drivers, their companies that they uh, work with that saying, listen, if you smoke pot, it's okay. So it's an interesting story that's okay. out there. Amen. <laughs> Did you say amen? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Boy, Romaine, I like. Are you, you can... against the cannabis industry, Carol? No, I'm not. I'm for all industry. Uh, and uh, <laughs> good answer. I work at a business network. Oh, I'm very... for all industry. <laughs> all legal capital. <laughs> PVH got to mention they did their earnings soaring on a full year profit. Uh, uh, 
boost. It was up about 15% in today's trade. And as I mentioned, the Dragon Index was up here. Uh, some of those tech names, those Chinese ADRs, including names like Didi, they were up. What's interesting, Didi actually announcing uh, a union for its workers, trying to appease some of the oversight there in Beijing, Tim. Wow, close to 12% gain on Didi. Let's talk about some of the decliners that we saw today. Abvi finishing off of session lows, or up from session lows, I should say, down though still more than 7%. It fell as much as 12% earlier in the day. It was the biggest drop since March of 2020. This came after the FDA said that the arthritis medication from AbbVie will need a new boxed warning that points to an increased risk of death. That sent shares lower. It's supposed to be the company's next big drug as the top-selling Humira comes off patent in future sales taper. Also, keep an eye on Wells Fargo. I know Carol covered this one yesterday. It finished the day down yesterday 5.6%, today down 4.9%. Uh, Bloomberg reporting yesterday that Wells Fargo may face additional regulatory action over the pace at which compensating victims of past scandals and then shoring up uh, its controls. Uh, a lot of analysts weighed in today. Uh, one analyst, this one from Piper Sandler, said, quote, if this ends up being that regulators aren't satisfied, Caroline, this would clearly be bad news. Also want to check in on AMC, down more than 7%. Uh, Chad Bainon at uh, Macquarie, downloaded uh, AMC from neutral to underperform, saying uh, that the theater operators, quote, get this, fundamentals are nowhere near sh uh, where shares are trading. Fundamentals when we talk about meme stocks. Coming, Tim, didn't yeah. Tim have us, though, on that he watched us yesterday? Didn't that make you all warm and fuzzy? Yeah. Well, what else is he going to do on his off time? I also, I also love that. I think you said downloaded the stock rather than downgraded, which I think is oh, kind of perfect. Yeah, there we go. Saying. Downgraded. That's right. Thank <laughs> you, Caroline. I think downloaded is where it's at. No, no downloading <laughs> movies from AMC yet. That's what Caroline does to us all day. Uh, <laughs> I'm always downloading movies on AMC. Meanwhile, I'm having a look at what's also on getting downloaded, the dollar. We're currently off to the lowest since August the 16th. We're off by two-tenths of a percent. Why? Well, that ADP number, the data that came in slower than expected in terms of the jobs data, doesn't mean the Federal Reserve will be there to just keep that stimulus there a little bit longer than we're anticipating. Aussie dollar did well because their economy did well over in August, up seven tenths of a percent. Let's look at commodities. That also speaks of a very mixed picture going on in commodities at the moment. As I see, iron ore up 1.3 percent, steel getting a bit as well, up more than a percentage point. But Brent crude, this was a story of commodities today. Oil falling off by five tenths of a percent. Seventy one dollars is where we trade on Brent. Why? OPEC Plus saying, look, we're still going to be boosting our production. They think the demand will be there for oil. We fall that little bit. Meanwhile, I'm looking at across the sovereign bond market. Again, a very mixed picture. But the ECB still talking, still all that can speculation about whether or not they will pull back on the stimulus, pull back on the bond buying, yield spiking higher on Greek debt overall in Europe. Taylor. It is a well-behaved, stable bond market. Remain, we keep this fast. It is Anch on the twos, fives, and only really the tens and thirties catching a one to two basis bid. We hover right there at a 130 and a 192 on the 30 years. I know that we also continue to push forward to some of the earnings announcements we get. Yeah, Mocha Bear, if you're listening, cover your ears here. <laughs> <laughs> sales. Slightly missing here, 2.16 billion. Now, look, the street was really looking for, on average, by about 2.17 billion, so it's a modest miss off the average, but some of the high and estimates. They really came in below the high end of what the street was looking for. They adjusted EBITDA here and mm. adjusted, put the emphasis on that. 23.3 million, that's a huge miss here. 34.8 is what the street was looking for here. Chewing shares down about 10% here. It'll be interesting to see sort of uh, what this actually uh, is attributable to because mm. it looks like people are still buying a lot of stuff there, but maybe costs have gone up, maybe input costs have gone up, or maybe people are buying cheaper products. Who knows? Uh, how could they? Only the best. Yeah, how could, right, right, oh, no. Maybe Scott. <laughs> Maybe Spot has put on a lot of weight and they're just saying, okay, enough with the treats. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having a look at the earnings statement and they're saying they've crossed the halfway point in 2021. They said the results once again demonstrate strength. So they're not talking about uh, any sort of lackluster element there. They said the business remains healthy and second quarter net sales up 27%. So we'll have to dig into maybe analyst calls and the and the earnings calls to really understand what's happening. They say there's an uncertain market condition due to the ever-evolving COVID-19 pandemic. All right. Well, earnings are certainly evolving here, and we are also following shares of Okta after hours. The company reporting earnings today, shares falling 6% post-market after earnings. The company did boost its fiscal year revenue forecast. It did beat estimates. Second quarter adjusted loss per share coming in at $0.11, cents, uh, beating estimates, which said that the loss per share would come in at $0.35, cents, seeing that third quarter revenue $325 million to $327 million. Uh, estimates were for $321.7 million. The company seen fiscal year revenue $1.24 billion to $1.24. Five billion, uh, and uh, analysts saw 
Carol, $1.22 billion to $1.23 billion, but share, that's not enough for uh, investors. Shares down 6.2%. I'm going to say it's a bummer day for earnings because Chewy's down, Okta's down, and so is Five Below. That stock's down about 9.8%. By the way, the Okta CEO wow. joining us on Bloomberg tomorrow. Five Below, and this is what you don't want to hear from a company, Five Below not providing guidance for the full year of 2021. We've heard that from a lot of companies, to be fair, because of the pandemic, but nonetheless, investors not loving this. Five Below seeing thir third quarter net sales, $550 million to 565 that is above the estimate of 548 million sees third quarter eps 23 to 30 cents the estimate out there's 28 yeah. so it looks like they're lowering that range uh remain yeah def we definitely have to dig into that i wonder how much of this does have to deal with some of those supply chain issues yep. remember mm -hmm. we heard from dollar tree and a few other stores that i guess you can kind of put in the same basket as a five below and they basically made it clear they're talking about weeks of delays right now of, of the shipments that they would normally be getting in here and you wonder how much that has an effect here both in terms of what they're able to sell and, of course, the cost, of course, of what they actually do receive. And it's interesting after PVH, right, where they were able to manage yes. their supply chain. So it's not the same story for everyone. All right. Stocks are down in the after hours. We see Chewy down about 11% uh, here. So we'll be following that wow. into... It'll bounce back. It'll <laughs> bounce back. Roll over. Roll over. <laughs> for the pets. All right. That's going to do it for our cross-platform coverage on Bloomberg Radio, Bloomberg TV, and on YouTube. We'll see you again, same time, same place, tomorrow.